Hey everyone, Tony D with another hot take, and I'm here with little Joan. Oh, she's so fluffy. Um, today I want to talk to you about price gouging and why it, I've come to the conclusion it's probably a good thing. Now, I know people's reaction to that. What? It's a terrible thing. I got price gouged once, and it was awful, and, and, uh, and I lost a lot of money, and blah, 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 blah. Yes, the natural inclination is to say, man... I got ripped off here. Somebody charged me for something that, you know, normally would have cost $2 and then they charged me 20. It's not good. I mean, it sucks to have to pay more, but that is the laws of supply and demand. Now, there's the case of this guy who bought up hand sanitizer and he was selling it online for ridiculous prices. Uh, he slowly ramped up the prices and then Eventually, he got banned from eBay, I think it was, or one of the platforms. And now he's stuck with it all, and they're doing newspaper articles about him and whatever. Um, I have no problem with that guy selling stuff. If you're stupid enough to pay $20 for a bottle of hand sanitizer uh, in this particular phase of the coronavirus, you're an idiot because <laughs> hand sanitizer is still pretty much everywhere. Uh, you could still buy it. it. Yes, some places are running out of it. Amazon runs out of it. They've run out of cleaning wipes. And probably this week, you're going to see a lot of stuff like that run out. Um, but that's exactly why you should have stocked up a couple of weeks ago when everybody on YouTube was warning you, uh, including me. So this is the, first off, a lesson to people who don't think in advance. And you should think in advance. When you, when you follow the news and you hear about a pandemic, a potential pandemic, uh, you know, that is different from all the other potential pandemics, you should have some supplies. Now, should you have a bunker full of two years worth of dehydrated food and ammo and everything you need? No, not necessarily. I mean, unless you got the money for that and that space and time to get it all ready. I'd probably have that if I really, really had the money. But, um, you know, that's not a necessity. But it is a necessity to prepare for hard times. And you should prepare, you know, I mean, what if you lose your job? What if you lose your job? You know, if you're leaving, living paycheck to paycheck, and you have nothing to fall back on. That's stupid. Now, you know, I, I, it, it's ironic that I should be lecturing you, the poorest guy probably watching this video. Um, but, you know, I'm poor for reasons that probably are more related to my uh, choice of occupation than anything else. Uh, I'm not poor by design or anything. And when I do have money, I generally have some extra stuff lying around. Um and I made plans, you know, I made plans for this thing. I've got plans for, you know, to survive the next few months if things go really belly up. Um, you know, and I have things to fall back on. If you don't have any of that, <laughs> you know, if you, especially if you're a person who's like alone in the world, like if you don't have a family to fall back on, if you don't have a, a, a good cadre of friends or a deep bench, as they say, you know, you really should have a couple of months worth of money in the bank, uh, at the very least, and, uh, you know, have some, have some food around. Um, again, you don't have to go crazy, but price gouging, um, provides a specific function. And I've told this story before, but I'll tell it again. So I was on my way to Dragon Con during the weekend that Katrina hit. And Katrina, for those of you who don't remember, was the big hurricane in the United States down south in the early 2000s. Um, this was during the Bush era, and it was very devastating to the south. Uh, it disrupted um, the flow of oil and gas coming into the United States from the south uh, that basically went through the southern states. So... Uh, they were reporting, oh, there's going to be a lot of shortages of fuel for a while. And the moment they reported that, every idiot in the South went and gassed up. And every gas station ran out of gas. Now, I was driving from New Jersey to Dragon Con. 
And I gassed up in New Jersey, where we still had plenty of gas. But by the time I got into the southern region, all the gas stations were out of gas because of these morons who went out and said, oh, I got to make sure I have enough gas so I can go get, I don't know, a fritter and some barbecue or whatever. Um, so I finally get to Atlanta and I'm literally running on fumes and, I, and I'm worried I'm not even going to make it to the hotel. And I see a sign 587 for gas. Okay. Uh, one of the stations jacked up their price to 587. Now I didn't want to pay 587 for gas, but because every other gas station was out of gas, I had no choice. So I went in, got two gallons worth of gas or something. Um, or like, I don't know, 20, I might've gotten like 20 just to be safe, just so I could get around. <laughs> uh, because all I really had to do was get to my hotel and then go back and forth from the hotel to, uh, downtown Atlanta. So I didn't need a lot of gas. And by putting that price that high, what it forced me to do was to evaluate the actual amount of gas I needed because there was no way I was going to fill my tank at 587, right? I mean, that was just insane. Um, but I got like, I did a little math in my head and I said, well, if I get like $20 worth of gas, that should be almost four gallons. That should be enough to go back and forth from downtown until the prices drop back down or, uh, you know, until I have to bite the bullet and grab another 20 on the way out of town and hopefully hit somebody uh, more reasonably priced on the way back home. Um, so that forced a thought process. See, the other gas stations that didn't lower their prices, you know, they had no gas to serve the community. And they put up signs and people were stopping and like, where's your gas? Oh, we don't have any. We all sold out. And, you know, me stopping every 20 miles to look for gas was also eating up my gas. So I could have run out of gas three quarters of the way to Atlanta and then I really would have been screwed. So I applaud the gas station that price gouged me because without that gouging, I wouldn't have had the gas. And that's exactly what should happen in the regular stores. All the regular stores, when the moment toilet paper, people went nuts for toilet paper, I would have tripled the price. And when people came in and said, why did you triple the price of toilet paper? I would have said, because everybody's buying it. And you're idiots for buying that much toilet paper. If you filled your car with toilet paper, I don't know why you did. <laughs> Everybody on YouTube has been talking about this. Like, you know, what do you people eat that you need to so much toilet paper? What are you going to do with all the extra toilet paper? I mean, if this is the end times, um, toilet paper is, you know, on the list of things that will probably be sellable in end times. But, you know, after a few years, I think people will just go back to using a filthy rag to wipe themselves and th either throw the rag away or, you know, wash it in a stream <laughs> uh, like they did in the Wild West. So, uh, you know, or maybe maybe you'll get, uh, as they said on Workaholics one time, a clean pinch and you won't need to <laughs> clean down there. Ah, uh, uh, clean pinch. Anyhow, um, price gouging is the market and that's exactly what should happen. So I have no problem with this guy doing this. Now, there are extreme examples. So if he had life-saving hand sanitizer, like if you were going to die without the hand sanitizer, that's a little different. Okay. You know, this whole EpiPen situation, that's eh, a little different. Now, the EpiPen situation could have been cured by uh, eliminating patents or eliminating that particular patent. I would eliminate all patents, but that's just me. Some say, well, there'd be no research and blah, blah, blah. No, it's just that it would be a different price model that these companies would have to do or they would have to spend more money on security so you could not possibly figure out how an EpiPen works or what's in it. And... So they would come up with a situation where, oh, you need an EpiPen? Okay, just bring this person in and you'll have to put your arm through this wall and we'll inject you and then you'll be on your way. And you know, you won't be able to have like an actual EpiPen in your hand. We'll, we'll keep it at this place. And um, 
or they'll have like a vending machine. You can put your money in, you stick your arm in, the EpiPen hits you and that's it. You know, there are ways around it if you really want to protect your idea. Um, so I have no problem with this. It's, it's capitalism. That's how it works. And you may not like it. You may find it inconvenient or whatever, but it's better than the alternative. And the alternative is running out of gas. The alternative is running out of toilet paper when you need it. Let's suppose, you know, we're two months into lockdown for coronavirus and you're out of toilet paper and the supply chains has been so disrupted. You, you said, well, let me just make a quick run to the store. I'll just get one thing of toilet paper and then I'll be on my way. And you bother to go all the way down there. You've avoided being sick all this time. You sneak into the store and boom, you know, you look all over the place, no friggin' toilet paper. Now you've wasted your trip to the store. Maybe you get exposed to coronavirus finally, and then you end up sick another two weeks with no toilet paper. Toilet paper is not even a, as I said, a real necessity, uh, especially in modern times. You could just wa wash your bum. Wash your bum, as the English would say. Um, so yeah, let's price gouge everything. Um, and look, if someone price gouges you, you could be, you know, upset by it. Uh, you certainly could say to that price gouger, I think this was unreasonable. I'm never, you know, coming here again and I'm, I'm not patronizing you again. And I'll only patronize you when I have to, um, which is true with every store. So, <laughs> you know, and if everybody price gouged, so for instance, in my case with the gas, if all the gas stations had just raised their prices a couple of bucks, let's say, not even the five eighty seven. Let's say I, I I think gas was still under two dollars back then. Let's just say everybody raised gas by a, a a dollar a gallon. People would have come to the pump who who were just gassing up, who didn't really need it. And they would have gone, ah, you you raised the prices on me, you jerks. Ah, I, I guess I don't really need that much. And then they would have been on their way. And then I would have had gas all the way down to Georgia and it wouldn't have been 587. It would have been something more like 289 or some price like that. Um, and that still would have been high, but it would have been not as high as what I paid. And, uh, you know, we all would have had gas all over the South for the next few days until the fuel got going again. And then the price dropped back down. So, you know, these politicians who stand up and say, I'm going to take care of these price gougers. There will be fines. And that's exactly what happened during that gas prices. The governor of Georgia made a big statement and went after uh, people. Um, and, you know, locals pissed off that they saw prices go up. They, they helped too because, you know, virtue signaling. Um, you know, they didn't really do anything other than teach the lesson. Well, if, if there's another crisis, I guess I'm just going to open the pumps and run out of gas and then close down because what else am I going to do? I don't want to get fined. Uh, and I guess I'm just going to open my store and let everybody clear the shelves. Even though like a couple of days later, there'll be people coming back. Like, where's all the food? I'm, I, I'm hungry. I, I'm completely out of food. And you know, there'll be uh, people in your neighborhood with so much food that the half of it goes bad. So price is a function of the market. So price gouging, it's not gouging. You shouldn't even call it gouging. It's the natural supply and demand of the market. The demand goes up. We're in a crisis. The demand for hand sanitizer and wipes and all these things went up. The, consequently, the price should go up. And then when things calm down, the demand will go down and the price will come back down to normal. So anyhow, that's been your libertarian lesson for today. Thank you. Um, what else? Uh, oh, CB and I may be doing another live stream tomorrow and Sunday, probably sometime in the afternoon. We're going to talk about woke Hollywood and uh, various other things. So I hope you'll tune in and, uh, say hello until then stay safe, wash your hands and watch out for the coronavirus.